Well, you talk about the bottom falling out of the Joe Biden campaign. How's this? He's lost my vote. Many Irish Americans turn against Biden over Gaza war. This reporting from Al Jazeera. One evening in 2004, when John Francis Mulligan, a U.S.-born Irish citizen, was in the West Bank, a stranger asked him to walk her to a funeral. It was after curfew in Nablus, I'm sorry if I got that wrong, and Palestinians weren't allowed out on the streets. A young man had been killed earlier that day, and because of religious beliefs, his family needed to bury him within 24 hours, Mulligan recalls. But if they went outside, the Israel armed forces, quote, would open fire on them for violating curfew. The dead man's mother asked Mulligan, can you march with us? Can you stand at the front with our family because they're not going to shoot you? You're white. I just need someone literally to stand with me. This moment, the struggle to bury the dead in peace hit home for Mulligan, 54, who went to primary school in Northern Ireland during the troubles in the late 70s. It felt to me very much like going into political funerals in the north of Ireland where helicopters would be overheard. In that case, it was the British Army. Overhead. Uh, overhead, sorry. Thank you. In that case, it was the British Army. And here, it was the Israeli Army, he says. It really resonated. Mulligan points to these parallels as part of the reason he is rallying with other Irish Americans in the U.S. to support Gaza. And there's a picture of him with his poster and his free Palestine flag. Good on him. Quan, how do you say that? Quan McCann, an Irish stick fighting coach in Baltimore, whose family emigrated uh, through Ellis Island, New York, generations ago, says he's been stunned by how rapidly a network of Irish Americans has connected around support for Palestine. Some folks are in touch with organizers in Ireland. Others are chatting through social media. Many are talking to friends and siblings, explains McCann, who has almost 20 years of experience organizing for advocacy and protests. He calls the rapid and organic nature of the network building jaw-dropping, adding that every time I have a conversation, it leads to three more with three other people. Ireland has long been one of Palestine's foremost Western supporters. The country was the first EU member to endorse a Palestinian state, and after October 7th, Irish lawmakers were among the first in the West to call for a ceasefire. The Irish public's support is even more robust than their politicians. About 80% of Irish people believe Israel is committing genocide in Gaza, and many have called for a boycott of the White House meeting. This was the St. Patrick's Day meeting, which we'll get to in a, in a mm -hmm. second. In light of this fierce support, an Israeli minister recently told Palestinians to go to Ireland or the desert. Let's take a look at this meeting here between Leo Varadkar. I hope yeah, I got that's, that name. That's not a subtle right. or colonial project yeah. at all. Go, yeah. go to Ireland or go to the desert. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so as Biden continues to support Israel's military campaign, the Irish public has largely turned on him. In November, a mural of Biden in his ancestors' hometown was spattered over with red paint along with the words Genocide Joe. Irish member of European Parliament Claire Daly addressed recent remarks directly to butcher Biden in a fiery speech. We covered this when it happened. Thundering, the ancestors of the Ireland that you claim to be from disown you keep our country out of your mouth there's an image there when biden went to ireland uh, i remember that very image was everywhere online right because mm -hmm. it was this major mm -hmm. thing and now right. look at it now right. look at it if that's not symbolic of how his first term has gone uh i don't know what is while we're on the topic of ireland uh itself let's go to this meeting that they talked about uh just a moment ago this is the Irish PM uh, at the White House for St. Patrick's Day, showing Biden up right on stage. The Irish people are deeply troubled about the catastrophe that's unfold unfolding before our eyes in Gaza. And when I travel the world... <laughs> Look at Biden. I'm sorry, that's not Irish funny. But Bi 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 Biden, you know, he looks very confused. He doesn't know where he is. And when he says that, he doesn't know how to react. He's, 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 oh, really? <laughs> that's the effect of it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, uh, let's, let's my, look. my aides haven't told me about that. Right. As you know, the Irish people are deeply troubled about the catastrophe that's unfold, unfolding before our eyes in Gaza. 
Oh, is that, oh, yeah, yeah. oh, oh is that true? I wasn't <laughs> briefed really. on that. They were arguing about how fast I should walk out here. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's what they were. That's what we, they were concerned we, we, with. We decided to to go for a middle ground. How to how how it look? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How it look? How'd I do? Leaders often ask me why the Irish have such empathy for the Palestinian people, and the answer is simple. We see our history in their eyes, a story of displacement, of dispossession, a national identity questioned and denied, forced emigration, discrimination, and now hunger. The article continues. Now, Alison O'Connell, a lead organizer with Irish Irish Americans for Palestine, says her group has a chance to be effective, quote, because Biden talks so much about his Irish heritage. Last week, O'Connell delivered a letter in person to the Irish embassy asking them not to meet Biden as usual. The energy that comes up to St. Patrick's Day, people know this is our moment to at least make some kind of statement, O'Connell adds. This week, protests against the White House meeting are planned in at least seven states and in multiple cities, including New York, St. Louis, Washington, Minneapolis, and Albuquerque. On March 3rd, Mike Doyle, a teacher in Brooklyn who is fourth-generation Irish, marched in the St. Pat's for All parade in Queens, New York, a long-running alternative to the official New York City parade, the oldest and largest St. Patrick's Day parade in the world. That goes down Fifth Avenue. Some groups hoisted signs and banners for a ceasefire in Gaza, and Doyle recalls that as they walked through the historically Irish neighborhood of Sunnyside, quote, pretty much the whole street was cheering for us and shouting, cease fire. As the election approaches, Irish Americans who object to Biden's support of Israel have said the plan is to make their voices heard not only at protests, but also at the polls. McCann voted for Biden in 2020, but says he will vote for uncommitted in Maryland's primary, a vote held in May to choose the state's Democratic presidential candidate. O'Connell notes that her father, once a Republican, voted for Biden in 2020, but is now undecided. In an Irish Americans for Biden-Harris 2024 campaign kickoff meeting on Friday, Biden told attendees that he needed Irish Americans to win in November. The swing states of New Hampshire, Maine, and Pennsylvania have the most Americans of Irish descent in the country, number one, five, and six most Irish, yeah, respectively. I, 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 yeah, I don't understand that. Yeah, have I don't the, either. Have the most? Yeah. Well, wouldn't that Who mean knew? one, two, and three? Uh, so one, five, and six? Well, I guess one, three of the most, so three of the top ten, so but I guess just, New Hampshire uh, is number one. I don't thought New yeah, York or I, Massachusetts. I thought it was. I th- well, I, I've been. Uh, I've. I read New York State had the most people of Irish descent because they during the potato famine the majority came in through here or a plurality came through New York. Maybe this is the most as a percentage of total population because New Hampshire and Maine are very low population states. So maybe that, the highest that, percentage that could be. I yeah. think the greatest number of Irish descended people in America is in New York State. It would have to be New York, but this may be a highest as a percentage of the overall total. That makes uh, more sense. That makes sense. Some have blamed insufficient attention to Irish American communities, at least in part, for Clinton's 2016 loss to Trump. I just don't understand how he can defend bombing of hospitals of universities 900,000 children internally displaced, says Mulligan. He was the activist mentioned at the top of the piece. He's lost my vote, certainly. He would have had it before, but this went beyond the line. Here they are marching through Sunnyside with the ceasefire banner. Um, So obviously, beautiful to see. Irish-American voters tend to skew much more conservative than their native-born folks over uh, on the other side of the pond here. Um, which is probably why we are top 100 news and politics podcast in Ireland. That was a while ago. We had to have cracked the top 50 by now, right? I mean, we were top 100 back when almost no one knew who. We oh were. yeah, when we had, we, yeah. yeah, we got to be on the charts ago. now. We got to be top 40. We got to be on on the. We're Bill burning Park up now. the charts in Derry. <laughs> yeah, that top 100 is old. We have to do some more research to update that. But uh, on a more relevant and more serious uh, note, uh, great to see number one and number two. Uh, come on, you're when when you've lost the Irish. Now this is not. I mean, it's one thing that you you and, know and young Joe voters, Biden. Arab voters. Now Biden losing the Irish. I mean, come on. Come yeah, on. I mean, Bi- Biden is a throwback to the old ward healer Irish politician. 
Yeah. Uh, he's very much this American Irish political type. And for him to be losing, which, as you say, a lot of the Irish were Republicans already. Right. So if you're losing the not Republican Irish, who you got left at that point? Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, just quite the significant thing to to observe. Like I said, just piece by piece by piece, the bottom just just falls out of this. This well, is because why... people don't like when they see the face of the American empire. And we, right. we, we've pointed out before. Yes, Gaza, not to take away, it is horrific, as horrific as anything we've seen in several decades. But hey, man, if we'd seen more images out of Yemen, they would have been just as bad. Absolutely. But we, we, didn't, we didn't see it. When people see what America's actually doing, they don't like it. That, that's why after Vietnam, they started embedding reporters with the troops to control what they would see. Iraq. I, I've made this point many times. When we saw that in Fahrenheit 911, it was the first time you saw Iraqi casualties for a lot of people. So we, we didn't even really have the internet at the level that it is now. So nobody had seen anything like that. Iraq looked like a video game. It looked like a game of Missile Command when you yep. watched it on TV. It was just green tinted, little explosions down there. You didn't see children. Man, when you show people, most people are not inherently uh, evil. Right. When you show people, civilians and families getting blown apart, they usually have a negative response. And you're seeing with Gaza, because it is this horrific genocide going on in a world with very advanced internet communications and social media, people are seeing it, which, you know, in a related story, that's why they want to take down TikTok. Yeah. No, that's absolutely true. That's a huge part of it. I also think another component of it. And that's probably the main one is now the information is just so in our face. Another part of it, though, is I mean, that I would argue it, it since Vietnam, people have not seen what a war looks like to this extent. Yes, I think that's absolutely true. I also think another part of this is that Biden, uh, because of his personal shortcomings and old age, frankly, uh, just lacks the charisma to attract attention to him and not everything that's going on behind right. him. Blinken, right. Sullivan, right. right? Most presidents have a certain charisma to the point where they can get the camera on them, get the eyes on them and off of what's happening. Trump had that in his own way. Obama certainly had that. Even Bush had it to a greater extent than Biden. I mean, Biden is just a non-entity. They won't let him take questions from the press. So you don't even... There is right. no distraction. There's no shiny right. thing for you to look at while, say, Libya happens, right? Um, we just see through this guy who is supposed to function at least as a figurehead and can't even do that. And so it's they, just they all used, in your face, relentlessly. They, the press used to complain that Trump didn't do enough press conferences. Right. This guy yeah. does no press conferences. No, there's nothing wrong with him. He mumbled through a State of the Union. He's great. He's doing all right. He, right. Didn't, shit, he didn't shit himself. He's fine. But the one time they sent him out to answer questions from the press happens to be the day that the prosecutor said he has right. no brain left. This is why I'm telling right. you, I see a switch coming. I know I'm in the minority on that, but I see it coming. I'm seeing if, I, if Russell can go down with the Ron DeSantis ship, I can go down with that one. <laughs> I'll take my chances. <laughs> I'm I'm not saying you're wrong, and no. all I have to say to that is, here comes Ron. Okay. Here comes Ron. Yeah, exactly. Here comes Ron. Please clap. Yeah.